let's start the topic fatigue failure uh, objective of this topic is uh, first of all we'll try to uh, get a concept of fatigue failure and then we'll see that why this fatigue analysis is important in design and then we'll see what are the steps of fatigue fracture and then we'll see that how fatigue test is done and how to interpret the results and then we'll uh, see uh, how to calculate the uh, important parameters in design like fatigue strength and endurance limit and then we'll see the characterization of general fluctuating load and fatigue failure criteria so that is the modified goodman is our main objective improving fatigue life is another manufacturing challenge uh, or a design challenge uh, so that how can we improve the fatigue life that we'll see and finally we will try to design uh, a component uh, against the fatigue life so let us start with the definition of fatigue that failure of a material under fluctuating load at a maximum stress level below the yield or ultimate strength of the material is subjected to large number of stress cycles so let us see what it means the failure of a material so fatigue is a failure of a material under fluctuating load so we have to understand what we mean by the fluctuating load okay at the maximum stress level below the yield or ultimate strength see we know that the fracture occurs above yield or ultimate strength right but this is happening under uh, ultimate strength of the yield provided it is subjected to large number of stress cycles large number of stress cycles so uh, these are the things that we will see so first of all we will see what we mean by the fluctuating load so the fluctuating load means if the load uh, we are varying with time okay so previously we have uh, discussed about certain failure theories where uh, mainly we have considered the static load right but right now we are trying to set some failure theories which will handle the dynamic load or the fluctuating load. Now let us take a very simple example, uh, rather a classical example to understand the fatigue. Suppose uh, you take a wear and if you try to break this wear, uh, if I give you two choices, one is that you just uh, give a pull at the two ends and another one you can just bend it uh, in opposite direction continuously and from your intuition you know if you do in that way that with the less effort it is possible to break the wear instead of pulling it from two sides so this is our intuition and why this is happening this is happening because the failure that is taking place here is by fatigue okay so uh, if you see that what is actually going on here now uh, let us consider this is the wear portion and when the wear portion is supposed in this position this particular position is called sagging by bending so at this position if you see the top fiber this top fiber is under compression whereas the bottom fiber if you see that is under tension so this top fiber is under compression and the bottom fiber is under tension now you just take one point you just take one point at the top fiber now uh, when you are again uh, moving it on the other side or bend it in the other side that means when it will be in a fogging condition then the same point which is on the top fiber is now here and you see now this point will be under tension whereas 
this bottom fiber is now under compression. So if you just look at this point on the surface of the wear, it is continuously changing its stress level from a compressive load to a tensile load. So if you try to plot the stress that is acting on a point, surface point, let us consider in the wear, what you, will, you are observing, maybe you are starting from this point, that means the time zero, suppose the tensile stress is there at this point and gradually when you are gradually bending it in the downward direction so what is happening the stress level is decreasing and this is the position corresponding to this one that means a compressive load is now acting at that one so same point is experiencing from tensile to compressive and that is varying with time so these are kind of a repetitive cycle okay that is taking place and that's why and this is this is a kind of fluctuating load so you are applying fluctuating load and because of that the material fails earlier than in load ultimate so at a lower stress level the material fails and this kind of failure is called fatigue okay i hope you have understood the concept of fatigue now the example that i have given you is a very simple classical example but if you see in different industrial applications you will find that uh, many components many machine components are under fatigue load just see for example uh, suppose this is one is a motor and consider the shaft the shaft is connecting suppose this motor and this uh, pulley and this pulley having some weight mg and because of this weight basically this beam is under bending and so one side is under tension and the bottom side may be under compression and now it is rotating that means the top side is going to the upper one and the upper one is going to the bottom one that means continuously the load acting at a particular point is changing with time similarly if you see the gear pairs here it is under high stress and when it is going in that position then the stress will be relieved so a fluctuating load is going on here you can see the wheel of a locomotive you see when it is in contact with the track maybe a very high stress level will come when it will go on the other side the stress will be relieved similarly in case of a spring also the fluctuating loading is coming so almost uh, all the machine components you will find to some extent uh, fluctuating load has is there and it has been found that 90 percent of the uh, engineering mechanical engineering components uh, they fail by the fatigue so uh, you can understand that why in design the fatigue is so important okay now see what are the stages of uh, fatigue failure the fatigue failure are uh, initiated by the crack formation so initially because of the cyclic loading uh, crack generates at the surface and then in the second stage that crack grows gradually because of the cyclic loading and then finally that ruptures or the fracture takes place okay in a brittle form so this is uh, what are the different uh, and these are the different steps of the uh, fatigue fracture now see uh, how we can find out some parameters for the design by the experimental results okay so here is the setup for the fatigue test where you can see this motor is providing power to the shaft so that it can rotate and this portion is basically where the specimen is mounted and here you can see that the bearings are there and some arrangement in the setup is there so that you can apply load uh, and that load you can thought of is distributed into these two ends where they are the bearings that is also giving the support reactions and if you see schematically uh, the arrangement is like this so what is the most important thing if you draw the bending moment diagram of this kind of an arrangement what you will observe is that within this region 
it is a pure vanadium it will be pure vanadium okay so vending moment is constant okay and the arrangement is uh, such that you can change this magnitude of w so that you can change the bending moment level okay and that's why you can change the stress level that is acting on the sample the maximum stress level so this is the arrangement and the shaft of the specimen is rotating continuously that means under bending maybe a portion uh, if you consider the uh, bottom portion suppose let's consider this bottom portion so this bottom portion is under tension initially let us consider at the particular instant so it is having a stress value of this much and then since it is rotating this point uh, on the surface will go gradually to after 180 degree rotation in the top surface so after 180 degree rotation it will come to this point that means it will be under compression okay so this thing is basically happening and over and over in different cycles exactly in the same manner how we have explained uh, these things occurring okay so here basically in this fatigue test this kind of cyclic loading is active this is a special kind of fluctuating load where this is called completely reversed cyclic loading completely reversed the name came from that from one point it is spin side and just in the opposite that means after half cycle it will be the same magnitude but compressive stress okay so it is a completely reversed cyclic loading okay we will come into the other kinds of fluctuating loading later but what uh, is the test result uh, that let us see so if we see the test results what we uh, can see here you see uh, this point is basically the ultimate point okay so what is the meaning of that so the meaning is that suppose you put the bending moment in such a way or you adjust the w you adjust the w in such a way that the bending moment will create some stress and the maximum value of that bending stress if that is same as s ultimate then what will happen we know if it is s ultimate then before the first cycle rather before completing the first cycle it will fail so this is what is called the first cycle failure because it is ultimate stress will reach and the material is going to fail okay it will go into fracture so that is why corresponding to one cycle here you can see 10 to the power 0 means 1 corresponding to one cycle it will fail at SUT that means ultimate stress now suppose uh, now instead of SUT if you reduce the load now if you reduce the load then what will happen because of that reduced load the maximum stress that will come in the sample let us consider that stress level is lower than this one say we come to this stress level okay so at this stress level if we uh, run the motor then what we will observe we'll observe that it will take some cycles right and after that it will fail maybe after a few cycles it will fail from this diagram corresponding to this you see this is the point where it will fail that means it will sustain up to this many number of cycles maybe around say um, maybe around 80 or 90 cycles it will take and after that it will fail okay so so after 80 cycles it will fail at this stress so different uh, coordinates in this diagram which are shown by this dotted line a uh, dotted 
these dots are basically coming from different values of stress that we are basically setting by adjusting this w okay so by gradually reducing the value of w we are reducing the stress maximum bending stress acting on the material uh, or the specimen and we observe that these are the points where the material fills now if we draw a line through the experimental results we'll get this kind of element okay here you can see in the x-axis it is the number of cycles but they are plotted on a log axis in the y-axis it is not a log axis it is a plane axis okay so uh, if you plot you will find these are like the failure lines that means this portion is safe and this portion is not safe so if i tell you that if you reduce the stress level up to this much then how many number of cycles the material will sustain before fracture the answer will be you just extend this one to this line and see what is the number of cycles so it will be able to sustain after this many number of cycles clear so this is what is the interpretation that we can make out of the test results now obviously this result is for a steel sample of a specific steel sample and the result is like this but the most important thing that you have to observe that after reaching this much of stress which is around 50 uh, kilo pound per square inch 50 you see that this is parallel to the x-axis that means if it can sustain up to million cycles if the material can sustain up to million cycles for a stress value that means it is not going to fail afterwards that means its life will be infinite so we are actually looking for this one infinite life infinite life so million cycles is basically the mark that you have to remember so what we can see from this graph that if the stress level is below 50 then its life is infinite because it will not going to fracture because of fatigue infinite number of cycles but if it is above 50 if the stress level is above 50 then what you can observe is that it has a finite life that means corresponding to this one okay so uh, here you can see we can divide the whole region into two parts that means if the stress level is below 50 then it is infinite life okay so this stress level when the curve becomes parallel is called a C prime or endurance limit but this endurance limit is uh, uncorrected uh, endurance limit and that's why this prime symbol is given we will come in the next uh, slide probably we'll see that how to correct this endurance limit and to find out the uh, modified endurance limit anyway so we get a stress level if you put the stress below that then its life will be infinite but if the stress is above it then we can find out the fatigue strength corresponding to a particular life okay so this is how we can interpret the results so now if you observe carefully we have divided it into two parts like low cycle fatigue and high cycle fatigue what we mean by low cycle here you see in the graph low cycle means it is up to thousand cycles if the component can sustain up to thousand cycles then it is called low cycle so in case of a low cycle uh, we can define the fatigue strength from 
this one. Suppose we want to design a component for 100 cycles or we want to define, uh, we want to design a component for say 500 cycles. Then what we will do? For 500 cycles, what we do? We simply uh, corresponding to 500 cycles, we will draw a line and we will see that what is the fatigue strength. So its fatigue strength will be this much. So if the strength is less than that, then definitely it will uh, surplus 500 number of cycles without fatigue. Okay. So this is what is the idea to find out finite fatigue strength uh, in case of low cycles. Okay. Similarly, uh, for high cycles, you see that which region is high cycle. If it is more than thousand, if the life of this sample is more than thousand number of cycles then it is under high cycle fatigue in case of high high, high, high cycle fatigue you can see uh, we can get two different region you see from thousand to million cycles from thousand to million cycle we can define the fatigue strain for a particular number of cycles or a particular life we can define the fatigue strength but if it is more than million cycles then it is infinite life okay so in that case what is the strength the strength is basically the endurance limit okay so for more than million means infinite cycle strength endurance limit for finite life of the high cycle fatigue corresponding to those number of cycles for which we are going to design you find out what is the fatigue strength okay so this is what is the mm, guideline to find out either fatigue strength or the uh, endurance limit depending upon the application in different region now uh, this uncorrected endurance limit that I have just told you in this diagram, uh, this value is SE prime, which is uncorrected endurance limit. This uncorrected endurance limit can be predicted uh, from the uh, tensile test. So, without doing any fatigue test experiment, only from the tensile test data, if we want to predict this data, then obviously one job we do not need to do that is the to, do not need to make the fatigue test because it is quite obvious that if you do the fatigue test you can easily find out what is the endurance limit when it will be parallel then corresponding to that the stress will be the uncorrected endurance limit okay but without fatigue test how can we find out that so there is a direct relationship between this endurance limit and the tensile strength of the material and that's why this tensile strength we can always find out from the uh, tensile test data so uh, if you do the tensile test data you can always find out the ultimate stress okay ultimate stress is basically the ultimate tensile strength of the material so this is basically su ultimate strength su okay so this su data if that has been plotted with respect to uncorrected endurance limit you find that it's almost a linear relationship for the carbon steel okay so for carbon steel you can see this yellow line okay so it's a direct relationship a linear relationship and if you observe this relationship is like this it is 0.5 into s ultimate so this is how we can find out the endurance limit directly if we know what is the ultimate strength but this is true for the steel samples may be quite slightly different for the titanium and all. so here we are discussing with the steel samples now but you see that after uh, 200 that means if the stress level is more than 200 ultimate strength is more than uh, 200 then it is not increasing much and that is almost constant okay so above 200 uh, case i will find that it is constant to 100 case okay so this is how we can find out the uncorrected endurance limit for 
डिफरेंट अनकरेक्टेड इंफ्लुएंस दे मीन नोइंग अल्टीमेट स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द मटेरियल नाउ द मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ द इंफ्लुएंस लिमिट इज डन बाय दिस डिफरेंट फैक्टर्स दैट इज टू बी कंसीडर्ड एंड इट इज गिवन बाय द मरीन इक्वेशन हियर यू कैन सी दैट के ए द फर्स्ट वन इज द surface condition modification factor see our result that we have got uh, in our fatigue test the ac prime is considering the fact the test has been done on a highly polished surface where almost there is no uh, surface roughness okay so this is kind of an ideal situation so depending upon the surface roughness this surface condition modification factor has to be considered if the surface is more and more rough then accordingly this ka you can find out from the charts in the handbook now the second factor which is the size modification factor size modification factor corresponds to that uh, you have tested a sample corresponding to a particular size okay if the size is uh, larger than that okay uh, in that case obviously uh, the uh, chances of initial cracks and all that are more so accordingly the fatigue uh, strength will be different or the endurance limit will be different okay so that's why the size modification factor also this can be empirically found from the charts available in the handbook then third one is the load modification factor here you see in our test what we have done we have considered a shaft which is under bending okay so this is a situation where we have done our experiment if the situation is same like bending in that case kc will be 1 but otherwise if it is not bending in that it can be some tensile and compressive kind of a axial stresses are acting okay so in that case obviously kc has to be modified again uh, these results are also you get from the handbook kd Uh, this one is the temperature modification factor. Okay, so depending upon the temperature, uh, these are this will this is going to vary, and that is why the temperature correction is to be done, and that is incorporated in this particular constant K D. Then the reliability factor. Uh, you can see the test results that you have got. Uh, they are not always very reliable. that means here you are plotting this kind of a thing maybe you are plotting maybe like this so that you can accommodate all other points also or here also you can see these are the different points when you are approximating by this straight lines in this log log uh, log axis then you see that many of these data are in this region so to correct these things some kind of a reliability in the experiments are to be taken care and that is actually done you know, from the charts knowing the reliability percentage it is possible to find out what is the corresponding factor and finally kf is the miscellaneous effect modification factor because depending upon the application many other factors can uh, hamper this uh, test results and that's why those can be taken care of okay so if you correct all these things then you will get the corrected ac so for in a design problem your first job will be to find out all these constants from the handbooks then you find out ac prime either either using the tensile test data simply by doing this okay and then it is possible to find out the ac okay or the endurance limit now some important properties uh, of low cycle fatigue you see that low cycle fatigue occurs at a very high stress values okay very high stress values if you see this diagram low cycle fatigue that is occurring at very high stress values and low number of cycles that is why they are called low cycles low number of cycles they sustain at a high stress values high cycle fatigue they are at a lower stress value you see the stress values are less but 
number of cycles are moved. Since they are acting at a low, cycle, uh, low stress values, that is why the deformation that is taking place within the material are elastic in nature because the stress levels are lower than the yield stress. Whereas here the stress levels are higher, that is why both elastic and plastic deformations are involved in the low cycles. Here you can see uh, this F factor uh, which is uh, used to find out the fatigue strength corresponding to 1000 number of cycles. Fatigue strength corresponding to 1000 number of cycles means what? Here you can see this is what is the 1000 number of cycles. So this is what is the fatigue strength corresponding to 1000 number of cycles. So this is corresponding to 1000 number of cycles this strength value is SF SF 1000 that means corresponding to 1000 number, 1000 number of cycles this is the fatigue strength so that can be found out using this relation that this will be equal to some fatigue strength fraction F F is fatigue strength fraction into ultimate tensile strength of that material. So if you know ultimate tensile strength of the material and if that you can find out from this graph where this F is basically function of ultimate tensile strength and that can be analytically derived and this is not an empirical relation this is very much a theoretical after theoretical deduction finding out the relationship between f and s ultimate and that has been probably achieved okay so i am not going into the detail of that theoretical derivation you just remember uh, that these are directly related by this curve okay so uh, these curves are also available so you can always find out if you know sut you can find out the value of f so uh, now the fatigue strength corresponding to n number of cycles how can you find out you can find out using this relation that fatigue strength in low cycle fatigue can be found out if you know what is n number of cycles then it will be related by a into n to the power b by this relation okay so basically what we want to do in low cycle region if we want to find out the fatigue strength suppose we want to find out uh, we want to find out the fatigue strength corresponding to 80 cycles so in the graph what we do corresponding to 80 cycles you draw a line and we will find out what is the fatigue strength corresponding to 80 cycles but without this data that means without the data of the fatigue test how can we find out that we can find out using this relation if you know this n is suppose 80 number of cycles then the fatigue strength can be found out from this solution it will be a into the power b this is a model mathematical model by which you can predict fatigue strength okay and this a and b will be given by this solution a is ultimate strength of the material tensile strength of the material and b is log of this f log of this f divided by 3 remember the base is 10 here the base of log is 10 here okay so this is fatigue strength fraction so i am not going to show you the derivation where from this a and b are coming these are not very difficult but at this level you need not to remember the derivation you just see what are the results okay now for the high cycle fatigue what are the important properties they are occurring at the low stress values that we have already seen and they are guided by the elastic deformations only since they have low stress values below yield point only elastic deformations and fails at higher number of cycles and that is why the name is high cycle fatigue okay and greater than thousand cycles that you have already seen so in this case uh, high cycle fatigue having two parts one is finite life and another one is infinite life for the finite life we can find out the fatigue strength using the similar relation a into the power b where a and b are by this relation again f is involved in this expression and that f can be found out from the same part and if number of cycles 
are more than median more than one median then what is the strength strength is simply endurance limit okay so it has to be uh, less than endurance limit otherwise it will not sustain up to 10 plus 6 cycles next thing is very important that is the stress concentration consideration in fatigue uh, in the lecture of stress concentration uh, i have told you earlier that stress concentration is not so important in case of the endurance in static load but here now we are discussing with fluctuating load that means the load is varying with time here even if it is a ductile material stress concentration factor is very very important okay so that's why uh, that has to be considered and we have to take it very seriously so sigma max is equal to uh, fatigue stress concentration factor kf multiplied by the nominal stress okay so here by nominal stress what we mean the, the stress if not free specimen okay so what we can do uh, kf we can find out from this equation and this equation that q is called notch sensitivity factor notch sensitivity factor and that notch sensitivity factor is function of radius of curvature of the notch if you know the radius of curvature of the notch then from this graph you can find out what is the notch sensitivity factor or the q so q you can find out kt is what kt is the stress concentration factor that you have done in case of a static loading so in case of static loading the stress concentration factor that you have to find out from those uh, handbook graphs that uh, if you forget you just go and visit that lecture on stress concentration so uh, if you can find out q you can if you can find out kt it is possible to find out stress concentration factor for fatigue so if you know that you can always calculate the nominal stress so maximum stress you can find out okay now till now the sn curve that we have seen was for steel and in case of steel or the titanium alloys you will find this kind of a thing that means gradually they, they will decrease and finally uh, it will be parallel to this cycle so you can always define endurance okay but uh, if it is a non-ferrous alloys then we will find that there is no specific endurance limit that means this curve is not going to parallel to x-axis as we have seen in case of steel or titanium alloys okay so uh, in that way uh, this non-ferrous uh, alloys uh, you cannot define endurance limit definitely you can define fatigue strength corresponding to some number of cycles okay now uh, characterizing fluctuating stresses there may be other kinds of fluctuating stresses okay so here what we can see the general nature of the fluctuating stress is like this cyclic kind of a loading and let us try to define some of the important parameters here you can see if you consider this is the zero then this is the maximum stress that is occurring this is what is the minimum stress that is occurring okay what is the mean this one is the mean stress or the mid range stress that is occurring and uh, these are basically the amplitude of this cycle where these are called the alternating stress alternating stress okay so uh, two important parameters one is the mid range stress of the mean stress which is basically average of sigma max and sigma mean and alternating stress is basically uh, the amplitude which is basically sigma max minus sigma mean by 2 and more of that okay so that means this magnitude is what is the alternating stress okay so these two are the most important parameters in case of general fluctuating load or fluctuating stresses now till now what we have done is this kind of a situation okay in our test setup if you remember for the fatigue test we have considered a kind of bending when the shaft was rotating the kind of stress that was developed on the material is like this 
where what is the mean stress you can see the mean stress is sigma max plus sigma mean by 2 that means the same amount of tensile and compressive that means the sigma mean is 0 and what was the alternating stress alternating stress is basically this magnitude okay so that is what is the maximum stress that was there in that sample in the particular case okay so this was the alternating stress that this kind of uh, cycles are called completely reversed stress cycles now another uh, typical type or special kind of fluctuating stress is called repeated stresses where you can see that sigma mean this quantity sigma mean is zero mean means minimum not mid-range stress sigma mean is zero you can see this one is the sigma mean which is zero okay that means this cycle of this curve is touching the x-axis at the bottom so uh, in general uh, fluctuating stress will be like this may not be like this or this these are very special cases okay in general they can be like this now the question is what will be the uh, limit uh, or the strength uh, corresponding to this kind of loading okay we have found out that endurance limit is for this one if this kind of a loading is there then sigma a if this sigma a is less than endurance limit if this maximum value that means if the sigma a is less than endurance limit then material is safe right but what will happen for this kind of situations here the mean stress was zero so the two important parameters that will dictate what will be the strength for this kind of material when the fa uh, failure will occur under fatigue these two parameters one is the mean stress or the midpoint stress another one is the alternating stress okay let's see how this will happen now here i have shown one stress cycle which is like completely reverse stress cycle right which has been shown by the purple color now see here in the x-axis the mid-range stress has been plotted and you see for this case the maximum value of the alternating stress for which the material will have infinite life is the endurance limit okay these are the endurance limit the maximum value of this alternating stresses can be se plus and ec minus basically now if the mid-range stress is not zero mid-range stress is zero here that means this situation the bottle now if the situation is such that the red one the red one you see it is a repeated cycle right in case of a repeated cycle you see for the repeated cycle the mid-range stress is what this one in this expression you can see this length is what is the mid-range stress or the mean stress this value this value is same as this length and you see the minimum stress will be given by these two lines basically drawn here you can see what has been drawn one line has been drawn which is exactly 45 degree with this one which is called the mid-range stress so mid-range stress if you plot here and in the y-axis also if you plot mid-range stress so if you plot mid-range mid stress with respect to mid-range stress then it will be a straight line making an angle 45 degree the equation of the curve y is equal to x kind of a thing now you just think of this one which is corresponding to ultimate stress here the ultimate stress here so this point is s ultimate s ultimate now if you join with the origin with that point and 
if we join a line from this endurance limit up to this one here you can see if we join this point the minimum value minimum stress for this purple one the minimum stress and this one is the maximum stress if we join these two line and those two lines are basically the blue colored lines they are going to be the maximum and minimum stress corresponding to other kinds of fluctuating stress okay so this is what is the goodman's idea okay so here you can see that uh, for the repeated cycles that means the red one indicates by this one so for completely reversed the purple one the what are the limits endurance limit both same. for repeated cycles you see now the mid range is not zero some value is there for the mid range and here this 45 degree line crosses here so this will be the stress maximum allowable stress amplitude that means alternating stress so this one is sigma i this one is sigma i okay so that you can find out whereas for any general kind of a fluctuating stress say this one the black one corresponding to this one so that is corresponding to this one this one and you see that uh, for that this is what is the minimum this is what is the maximum and this is what is the basically mid-range stress because this length and this length has to be same because this is a 45 degree and that is why this line has been drawn in this way so this is what is the mean stress and this is what is the alternating stress so in that case the limitation of the alternating stress you can see this is what is the limitation of the alternating stress and if you compare with this one you see that this alternating stress is now less than this one so fatigue life if you see uh, that it will sustain for infinite life if it is a completely reversed then this is the alternating stress that is allowed but if it has some mid-range value that means if it is like that some positive mid-range value you see it is at this point in that case the allowable amplitude is less than this one okay so as you are increasing the mean value of the stress from zero if you are gradually increasing that basically you have to reduce the amplitude or the alternating stress to maintain for infinite life okay now let us try to see it on a much uh, clearer way uh, from this diagram now, this is what is called the modified goodman failure line and here you can see in the y axis what we have plotted in the y axis we have plotted the alternating stress that that means the stress amplitude alternating stress has been plotted in the y axis and in the x axis it is the mean stress or the mid range stress has been plotted now see when the mid range stress when the mid range stress is zero mid range stress zero means what kind of fluctuating load that is completely reversed mid range stress is zero you see mid range stress is zero that means it is a completely reversed kind of a cycle for that what is the limit limit is endurance limit that is why corresponding to this point it is the endurance limit now if there is no fluctuating load no alternating load suppose sigma a is zero consider the sigma a is zero sigma a is zero means what sigma a is zero means it is a static load the load is not varying with time okay if the sigma a is zero then when the failure occurs the ultimate point so this is what is the ultimate point so what has been done basically this point endurance limit and the ultimate point this line has been drawn between these two points 
and this line is called the modified Goodman line. Okay. Now you see. Suppose you have some uh, kind of a fluctuating load. Suppose this is the fluctuating load you have. So it is not a zero mean value. It is having some sigma m prime say and it is having some amplitude or the alternating stress say sigma a prime so this fluctuating stress is characterized by these two quantities i have already told you its alternating stress and the mean value so now you just plot these two in this graph so suppose this is what is the sigma m prime and this is what is the sigma a prime so you will get this point now if you see corresponding to this fluctuating load if this point is within this Goodman line that means in this region then it is safe but if it is outside this region according to Goodman criteria it will fail that means the infinite cycle it will not be able to sustain this is what is the meaning of that so uh, this is what is the criteria by which you can decide uh, the fatigue failure criteria so what is the equation of this straight line that is sigma a and sigma mean these are the two axes so sigma a by ac that is the sigma a intercept or the y intercept and sigma s ultimate s ultimate is the x intercept so sigma a by ac the sigma m by s ut is equal to 1 by factor of safety this is what is the factor of safety okay fs factor of safety so uh, you can see uh, we can uh, design based on the goodman uh, diagram or the goodman line so that it will be within this okay now here you see uh, other than goodman there are other uh, fatigue failure criteria like soderberg fatigue failure criteria where basically ill points actually has been considered instead of ultimate point okay and endurance limit and ill point join okay so this one is uh, more conservative if you compare with respect to modified goodman uh, but uh, if you see there is a point of considering the ill point what is the point the point is that suppose there is no alternating stress that means it is a static load then its mid-range value if it is above yielding then the material we can call that it will fail okay then we call that material will start yielding so first cycle yielding uh, can be predicted and that is why uh, this region basically if the uh, sigma uh, if the alternating stress is very small if the alternating stress is very small and the mid-range stress is very high then uh, this portion is really uh, occur before this one that means uh, according to the goodman you see that if the alternating stress is high that means the fluctuation is more but the mid range is uh, not very high then it will be characterized by the goodman line. so uh, this kind of concept uh, is also there and that's why goodman is not it is not that none of the failure criteria are perfect and everything uh, so uh, people are basically trying out different things and some of the traditions are there in different industrial applications and people follow that that's all it is not that one is good another one is bad like that here you can see two other uh, criteria like garbled line in the garbled line what you can see it is basically the endurance limit and the ultimate strength points are joined but they are not joined by a straight line but they have joined by a parabola okay so this one is a parabola barber's line is considered a parabola on the other hand you see uh, the sy line that means the yield point and the endurance limit uh, they have joined by an ellipse in the asm elliptic line okay so this is another criteria uh, so this asm elliptic basically handle uh, some of the first cycle yielding uh, with that idea that has been done 
but again i have told you that uh, these are not very good idea of doing that uh, but some of the traditions are there in industry like in bearing design people prefer asmlft in a component under fluctuating loading if weld is there so for that uh, people prefer say garber's line like that okay so uh, the equations you can see corresponding to each of them are uh, like this so these are very similar to how they are uh, whether it is parabola or ellipse or straight line and according to the equations that you have to consider now coming to this one which is uh, related to how can we improve the fatigue life on a component and one of the technique is imposing a compressive surface stress because you know that crack can easily grow if it is under tension so somehow if we can impose uh, externally some compressive surface stress then uh, it will be very fatigue resistant and for that uh, what has been uh, some of the techniques like short pinning in case of short pinning what is done very small uh, hard balls uh, in the order of say 100 microns or like that uh, or less than that they are at a very high velocity and strike on the surfaces okay so this particular uh, process is called the short pinning and by short pinning basically surface modification is done so that the surface uh, will be under compression and that will definitely reduce the chances of formation of crack or uh, crack growth another one is the carburizing uh, or nitriding that means some kind of a case hardening that means uh, uh, some carbon rich gas or the nitrogen rich gas uh, in those environment at a elevated temperature the samples actually give and for that what happens the carbon penetrates into the material and material becomes hard only at the surfaces and they are under compression and chances of propagation of crack will be less so this is done to improve the fatigue life in the components another one uh, uh, in a component design we have to remove any stress concentrators if that is present here you can see that a sharp change in cross section which is definitely a huge stress concentration whereas if you provide a, a fillet uh, with some fillet radius the stress concentration will be less and if the stress concentration is less then definitely chances of propagation of the crack will be less similarly highly polished sur surface also help in reducing the uh, uh, in reducing the chances of fatigue because if the surfaces are rough basically they act as some uh, cracks small cracks so they can easily propagate if you can make a very polished surface so number of cracks you can thought of as if removed from the surfaces so its fatigue life will definitely increase now finally uh, let us uh, solve one problem or basically design problem we will solve and that design will be against fatigue so let us see what is the problem statement so a circular rod is subjected to alternating tensile forces varying from a minimum 200 kilo newton to a maximum 500 kilo newton that means uh, it has been given that it has been given that uh, if max that is given and if mean that is given okay uh, it is to be manufactured with a material having ultimate tensile strength that is given ultimate tensile strength is given 900 megapascal and endurance limit is also given and that is 700 Then determine the diameter of the rod. So find out. 
so find diameter of the rod that you have to find out find diameter of the rod it is known that uh, factor of safety is 3 given quantity is factor of safety is 3 and stress concentration factor that means AF is 1.65 okay so you use modified Goodman criteria to find out this parameter so you have to design uh, a component which is under fluctuating load where the load is varying from some maximum value 500 kilo newton to a minimum of 200 kilo newton okay so we know that for any general kind of fluctuating loading it depends on two factors one is sigma a another one is sigma mid range so first find out these two quantities what is sigma m so sigma m is you know sigma mean is sigma max plus sigma mean by 2 and what is alternating stress sigma max minus sigma mean by 2 okay so how can you find out sigma max so sigma max sigma max you can find out by f max divided by area what is the area of the rod pi by 4 d square f max you know 500 by pi by 4 d square but remember uh, you have to consider the stress concentration factor also so if the stress concentration factor is k so sigma max of max that is equal to uh, stress concentration factor k into sigma max that is occurring here so what you have to find out uh, what you have to do basically you have to multiply this result i am not doing the whole problem you have to consider all the units and everything that you have to remember with proper unit you have to put the values similarly you can find out sigma mean this max corresponds to that at the stress concentration position what will be that so we have to consider both into 200 okay so you can find out sigma max and sigma mean and after that the remaining portion is you can easily find out sigma mid range that is a summation of these two divided by two so this value plus this value divided by two similarly find out sigma a that will be sigma max minus sigma mean divided by two and take modulus of that so uh, you can find out now these two quantities I think uh, you have understood you see Sigma M will be according to this so you can calculate this one then what will be the next step we we'll use 
the design based on Goodman criteria. So according to this criteria, what we know that sigma a divided by uh, s e plus sigma m by s ultimate is equal to 1 by factor of safety. Now factor of safety is known, sigma a is known, sigma m is known, actually sigma a and sigma m are actually not known, they are function of diameter because diameter will be there in those expressions but s e s u factor of safety everything is known so you can take d square common out of this and you can find out the value of d because this will contain uh, d sigma a will contain d okay so you can find out okay so up to this much for today thank you